Hello, all my wonderful 11th grade students. Um, Miss Maples here again with the second part of Tip Fast. So yesterday, you should have watched the video that I made that went over how to first start analyzing a poem, how to analyze the title, how to paraphrase the poem, and then how to go through and analyze the figurative language, which is the biggest piece of poetry analysis. It's the most in-depth, so you've already gotten through the hardest part. Now we're gonna move on to the last part of Tip Fast. So we're gonna do the A, S, T, T, okay? A stands for attitude tone, S stands for structure, T stands for title, because we're gonna reanalyze the title, and lastly, we're going to look at the poem's theme, okay? So make sure you are following along in your table for today as I explain. Okay, remember that there's a lot here, but it's mostly notes for you to explain how to do this. You can refer back to it later as we um, start to analyze poetry starting tomorrow in class. Um, you only have to fill in what's in the white boxes and I will show you how to do that because I'm, I'm analyzing Nothing Gold Can Stay, this poem by Robert Frost, in order to show you how to use Tip Fast instead of just telling you like, hey, there's this thing, it's called Tip Fast. I'm actually showing you how to use it so that when you go to use it on your own, it makes more sense. All right, so we're gonna move on to analyzing, figuring out what is the attitude or tone of this poem. Okay. Attitude tone is the poet's attitude toward the subject that they're writing about. It's created through word choice, diction, think back to yesterday, right? Um, through the use of figurative language, like imagery, metaphors, similes, all of that creates the overall feel of the poem, the tone of the poem. Okay. I have linked in a tone word list and a feelings wheel um, the feelings wheel we used yesterday when we analyzed that song by Gwen Stefani, or No Doubt. Um, so you can use those to help you with tone. My cat just jumped up here. Hi, Gracie. Okay. So you're going to want to think about the poem. What's the poem about? Um, what was the topic? How did diction and figurative language affect the way we felt about the topic? and then find a word that describes the tone and make sure you're able to explain why that tone fits. All right, so let's reread the poem to remember. Nothing gold can stay. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold, her early leaves a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down to day, Nothing gold can stay. Okay. So what is nothing gold can stay about? Um, I'm going to say the poem is about how beautiful young golden things don't last forever, they fade away. That's kind of my description of the overall topic, okay? Um, that's not happy, that's a negative idea, but he's not like crying over it, that's not the, the tone, it's not like super sad, it's kind of just straightforward, but also negative, right? So we have to try to find a word that fits that, that it's like, He's kind of just saying it like straightforward. So that's kind of getting at the tone. Even though it's not a happy topic, he's just describing the facts. It's not like a super emotional poem, even though poems usually are very emotional. So let's go to this tone word list and see if we can find a word that fits with the overall attitude of this poem. I like this list because it has the word and it also has its meaning. Kind of just looking over them. Apathetic means showing little interest. I don't think he's 
showing little interest. I don't know if that, that fits. Um, ooh, candid means truthful, straightforward, honest, unreserved. I kind of like that one. Candid might work. Straightforward, just telling us the facts, right? I like candid. I feel like he's just trying to tell us this is what life is, right? He's just being very straightforward about it. Okay, so let's go back over here. So um, are the words, images in this poem positive or negative? I'm going to say um, mostly this poem is negative because all of the beautiful things are described as going away. But the poem is more straightforward about it than sad. Like it doesn't mention someone being in grief because beauty fades. It just states that that's what happens. Nothing gold can stay, right? Dawn becomes day. The Garden of Eden sank to grief. Um, flowers on trees only last a little while, and they become leaves, and then leaves die, right? So he's being straightforward. The word that I found that I liked the best is candid. It says tone words because it's okay if you find more than one word that you think fits. You can put more than one. And then why do these tone words fit? So I'm going to explain that as um, this poem is straightforward and honest about a fact of life while the topic is sad, the poem isn't despairing. It reminds me of like the way my dad was with me growing up, just like, hey kid, life's not fair. It's a fact of life, right? It's kind of how Robert Frost is being. Hey readers, nothing gold can stay. It's something we all have to deal with. Okay. Structure. There's a lot of pieces of structure, but it's not as hard as figurative language, so don't get overwhelmed. Um, so first, you need to see how many stanzas there are when you're looking at structure. Stanza is a paragraph of a poem. Okay, so some poems have many separate pieces, many little paragraphs. Okay, um, some are one really long paragraph. Uh, some have one long stanza or paragraph and one short one, right? Uh, so let's go and look at this one. We only got one paragraph, one stanza, just a short one stanza, eight line poem. That's all this is, okay? So how many stanzas are there? One stanza. Okay, is there a rhyme scheme? So let's move on to that. You guys know what rhyme is? Dime, crime, lime, time, right? Rhyme scheme is when the ends of lines rhyme. Songs do it almost always, okay? The, there's a line and the end of it rhymes with the end of the next line, okay? So here's an example of rhyme scheme. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb. Her fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, Mary went, Mary went. Everywhere that Mary went, her lamb was sure to go. So lamb rhymes with lamb. So when you're doing rhyme scheme, you put you start with A. And then if any other line, the end of it rhymes, you put that same letter. So A, A. And then we've got, let me see. I was trying to do my... There we go. The focus mouse. Okay. Um, her fleece was white as snow. So we've got B. The last line is go. So those two match. So you put B there and there. And then this one, went, rhymes with went. So you've got A, A, B, C, C, B. So it's just a way of showing which lines rhyme with which lines. Rhyme scheme. 
Okay, so let's go look at nothing gold can stay. And I will do the rhyme scheme with you. Nature's first green is gold. So we always start with A. Her hardest hue to hold. Gold and hold rhyme. A. Flower does not rhyme with gold or hold. So then we're going to move to a new letter. B. Okay. Hour and flower rhyme. So I'm going to put B again. Leaf does not rhyme with anything above it. So we go to C. It does rhyme with grief. So C, then day does not rhyme with anything above it, so you use D and stay D. So the rhyme scheme of this poem is A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. That's how he does it. Each two lines rhyme together. So we're going to go write that out. A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. That's the rhyme scheme. That's all you got to put. Okay. Very simple. Okay. Um, does the poem have rhythm or is it free verse? Some poetry is like a song. It's got rhythm. You can snap it out. Okay. Um, some poets plan so that their syllables create a rhythm. Okay. And they have like certain number of syllables per line to help create that rhythm. I'm not going to go into all the details of that because it, it's very... There's a lot you can learn about it. Go look it up yourself if you're interested. Um, but just know that some poems have rhythm, like a song, and some do not. Those are called free verse poems. Free verse poems just sound like someone's talking, okay? Just sound like speech, whereas poems that have rhythm sound like a song, okay? There's a, um, Emily Dickinson has really good rhythm in her poems. Um, they're all very dark. Her, a lot of hers are very dark, dark. So here's one of hers. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves in immortality. Okay. The reason I have that memorized is because it sounds like a song to me and they it kind of gets stuck in my head. So that has rhythm. Okay. Other poems do not. They're just very, they just kind of go with the flow. Um, it's like speech. So let's go and look at this one. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaves a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. Definitely has rhythm, okay? can make a song out of it easily. Almost wrote this song. This poem definitely has rhythm. Okay, moving on. Um, does the poem use transition words? Transition words show that thoughts are changing. Okay, I've got a big list of transition words right here. So just go and look and see if you can find any transition words and just notice that words like and bring ideas together, whereas words like but show that ideas are separate, okay? I'm gonna highlight transition words that I see. Oh, there's but. So is also a transition word. kind of connecting the ideas, showing cause and effect. So in the beginning, he's not using transition words, but then he says, her early leaf's a flower, but only so an hour. So he's kind of showing like the beauty and then it goes away. The beauty and then it goes away, right? And then the leaf becomes, subsides to leaf then also is transition. So the beginning, he kind of starts with beautiful images. And then as the as it goes on with these transition words, he's showing how everything just kind of goes downhill, right? But that's, that's the, um, the pattern of life. Beauty goes away. 
beauty goes away. Here are his examples, okay? So I'm going to write but, then, and so as words that show transition in this poem. Don't overthink this, you guys. Like, when I grade this stuff, I'm not going to be like, oh, they missed a transition word. I just want you looking at it and thinking about it because it's going to help you understand the poem better. So try to find things like fanboys, if you learned that when you were younger, those um, conjunctions for and nor, but or yet so. You can use a list if you need, but any of the words that show connecting ideas or that they're different from one another. Punctuation. Just go and check out how the poet uses punctuation. Some poets don't use any, some use a lot. Um, Robert Frost use, uses commas and periods and semicolons all at the end of his line. So he creates just like a pause at the end of each line. So that's what I'm going to put. He uses um, period, semicolon, and commas. Uses at ends of lines to create pause. That's what punctuation does. It slows us down and it pauses us. Okay, are there structural changes in the poem? This poem, there are not structural changes. It's very obvious, okay? It's just one stanza, all the lines are about the same length. So you would come over here and say, no, there aren't structural changes. However, not all poems are like that. And when there's a structural change, it shows like a change in rhythm or a change in ideas. So I wanted to show you um, a poem that has a lot of structural change so you can kind of show the difference, see the difference of it. Okay, so do you see at the beginning, um, At the beginning, she's just listing things. This is all one stanza, one long stanza. And then, and there's hardly any punctuation. And then she has a nice soft, she has a slower, small stanza, and then another small stanza, and then another small stanza, and another one. So the first stanza is long with no punctuation. And then the other stanzas are short with lots of punctuation. So this one, she's describing all the stuff she's got to do to, around her house. I've got the children to tend, the clothes to mend, the floor to mop, the food to shop, the chicken to fry, the baby to dry, got company to feed, the garden to weed. You almost get out of breath reading it. And it makes this long stanza makes you feel rushed. And then this short stanza slows you down. Shine on me, sun. Shine on me, sunshine, rain on me, rain, fall softly, dew drops, and cool my brow again. I just wanted you to see that some poets use like a long stanza and a short stanza to kind of break up ideas, have a fast part of their um, poem and a slow part. So that's an example of structural change. This poem does not have any. So just write none. Okay, we're almost done, you guys. Hang in there. Now that you've done all of this analysis, reread the title and think about does it have a deeper meaning, okay? Because titles usually do. So after you have done all of this analysis, what meaning does this title have? And I'm going to say that this title really emphasizes that beauty doesn't last, youth doesn't last. Basically, the title sums up the main ideas of the poem. Okay, the first time you read Nothing Gold Can Stay, gold doesn't really mean much, but after you've read the poem, you see that gold is symbolic of beauty, youth, 
things that they don't stay shiny, right? They don't stay shiny like gold. They go away. I know that you guys don't think about that now, but when you get to be my age, you start seeing the wrinkles, right? Youth fades. It's just life. Okay, so now we are going to look at theme. Theme is really why we do all of this. What is the message of this poem? What can we take away as readers? Okay, so a theme is the message about life that a poem reveals. Uh, you can figure out theme by thinking about what's the subject or topic of this poem, and then what's the message. And when you put those things together, you've got theme, okay? Um, your theme should be one complete sentence long. You all will write it differently. There's not one right answer. Um, here I'm having you guys practice writing two themes because good literature, you can usually find more than one lesson to take away from it. So, oh, and it's not a moral. It's not telling you what to do. It's just expressing a truth. So I'm going to say that um, beauty might be a topic of this and something about um, change. Okay, so my... What is this poem saying about beauty? Um, beauty doesn't last forever. There's a theme statement. What is this poem saying about change? Um, change is inevitable. There is no escaping time. Just like trees cannot escape the fact that they are going to lose their flowers and later their leaves, right? We cannot escape the fact that we age. That's what it means to be alive, right? That's what this poem is showing. Okay. I have just walked you through analyzing an, a poem by using tip fast. You now know all of it. Title, paraphrase, um, figurative language, attitude, tone, structure reanalyze the title theme and we will be using this as we move forward so hopefully you got it and if you followed along you should be done with your table for today all right bye you guys